Hey, David Ralfoff here. Just wanted to do a quick video on how uh, to structure some of your code in Unity. Um, this is something I struggled against a little bit when I started, but um, definitely like the way it works now and uh, it makes your life easier to embrace the way that Unity just uh, structures things uh, by default. So I'm just gonna walk through that a little bit here and show you um, how it does it and then like what some of the advantages are. So. Uh, you can see here I have just a, a game up I've been working on. I have a list of players. I have a list of items. I have a list of enemies. Um, if I just pull one of these uh, uh, game objects up from my scene, you can see on the side here in the inspector we have a list of a bunch of different things. And these are uh, known as components. So these are all just different components that are on this game object for the mother, which is just a character uh, in this game. Um, but the cool thing here is, uh, so the, in programming, you sometimes hear of things is like an inheritance style relationship where something is a version of something else. So like a, a dog is an animal or maybe, a uh, a knight is a character type or character class. Um, there's another kind of relationship that is a, has a relationship. Um, sometimes that's referred to as like a collaborator. So, Maybe a player has a weapon or has a shield or has a set of armor or has attributes. Um, <coughs> and that maps uh, that maps over to how Unity treats things by default. Uh, so these components are more of like a has a relationship. So this mother player has a box collider, has a sprite render, has a transform, has an interactor. If you don't know what all these things are, it um, doesn't really matter. It's not the point of this video. Uh, but the important thing is that um, a game object can have any number of these components and any of the components, if you um, set up your code the right way, uh, can be swapped out for um, another implementation of the same uh, component essentially. So uh, just to give you an example of that, uh, here I have a custom component called the interactor. And what this is is when a collision happens, I want to uh, be able to decide what should happen for whatever um, character, you know, ran into something in the world. Uh, but I may not want that to be the same. Uh, and I mean that in two ways. So uh, when a character runs into something in the world, <coughs> they're going to react differently if it's uh, an item that increases their health or if it's an enemy or if it's just a wall or you know, any number of different things. Uh, but also, um, the other dimension is um, different types of players or different types of characters might, you might want them to react differently to different items. So <clears throat> just as an example, um, in this game, when the adults run into, uh, I think it's when they run into mushrooms, they can eat them and uh, it increases their health. Uh, and then the kids don't. Um, the kids typically don't want to eat mushrooms, so... Uh, they, at the moment, increase their health through picking up flowers, but it could be candy or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, they're just, they're going to, different uh, characters are going to behave uh, differently. And also, um, they need to behave differently based on what they're running into in the world. So with this interactor, the thing that's cool is um, if, if I want to say the kind of thing that's being interacted with, uh, I set this up so that it has a type, and then based on that type, I can go through and I can say what I want to happen. So uh, at the moment, the uh, players don't have a type, it should probably just be player. Um, but I can jump down to, for example, the mushrooms in this world, and they have a type of food. And if I jump to flowers, they have a type of stimulant. If I jump to enemy, um, it's got a type of enemy. And then what I can do with that is um, I can on any of the interactor components that I have. Uh, so this is just a custom script that I made. Um, so I could just, based on the type of thing that is being run into in the world, um, <coughs> I can behave, uh, I can have it behave differently. So uh, this is the interactor that I think I use for the adults in this world. So uh, Basically, if they run into an NPC that doesn't do anything, if they run into a stimulant, it's going to um, heal them by whatever amount um, is attached to the attributes on the, the object's uh, attributes that they ran into. Uh, if it's an exit, 
it'll just uh, load the next scene. Uh, if they run into an enemy, it's going to um, treat that like an attack and handle that appropriately. <laughs> and then if, uh, for whatever reason, the interactor doesn't have a type, it just does a default, which is do nothing. Uh, but the cool thing here is, um, so this is the interactor for the adult. If I want to show how that would work differently for a different kind of player, I have an interactor over here called uh, Interactor Kid. And I can pull that up and I can see if, um, so we have an analogous uh, method here, which is just interact. And um, for the case of when it's food that you're interacting with, it's going to heal the heal the kid. And then when it's an exit, it's going to exit. And other, anything else that's going to treat is an attack. Um, so yeah, it just makes it really easy to... Um, uh, you know, you basically define the component and the way it should behave. Um, you can do that using a, what's called an interface uh, just to guarantee that this interact method is going to be available um, on any of these interactors. And then uh, based on the kind of thing uh, that you're running into, you can have the behavior change and you can just swap these components out on your game objects. So, uh, just, sorry, just a second here. So anyway, you can see uh, it, something that's nice about this setup is that it gives you a lot of flexibility. So any of these custom components could be swapped out for a different implementation if you really wanted to. Uh, you may not need to. In a lot of cases, um, they're going to behave the same way for where any object they're attached to. So for example, this sorter here, all it does is look through this scene and then uh, adjust the um, the Z position, the, how close you are to the screen, like basically what's in front and what's in back based on how far up or down the screen you are. And that's a component I have on anything that's appearing in the game scene. Um, but uh, yeah, just just wanted to give you a quick overview of how Unity uh, structures these things. There's more detail I could go into about how you get access to the components and um, uh, how you interact with them and stuff, but I think that's probably for another video. Just wanted to kind of give you the concepts here. So yeah, thanks for watching and, um, you know, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. If you want to get more videos like this, if you like the video, hit like, and, uh, I'll be doing more of these unity videos. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.